Alrighty. So at the time I'm recording this, the 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 video, the Spider-Man related video has gotten over like seven thousand views and quite a number of likes. And definitely like we went from I guess I maybe is more accurate. I went from like eighty seven or so subscribers to like a hundred and seventy five. Uh within the one week it's been up. And uh first off welcome to these uh to the channel i appreciate it uh you watching uh welcome to this type of video uh something i i tend to do more so for myself after i you know i i finish a project and it's out for a little bit and i have time more more time to reflect on it and it's a behind the scenes and self analysis, uh, which were separate before and have now, uh, I decided to do mush them together since they, I think they were very repetitive, uh, for a good period of time. If I'm honest, so I don't, I don't want to do two separate videos that are both kind of repetitive. And I think it's just having one is is fine and works. Um, they're a bit long as well um but with that being said i skipped over a part i want to talk about which is gratitude i'm i mean i am i did not realize i think how much of a positive impact and how it would feel just reaching a hundred subscribers on youtube i like like obviously you can't make money until you're like a thousand subscribers and apparently four thousand hours watched or something like that like in a year's time but reaching 100 after just how well this video has done which you know hey maybe i should make videos on topics that are definitely like very active fan bases more often huh <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm just very grateful and i i really appreciate it there's been a very like um, pretty much every comment i think i got on the video has been very nice and I really appreciate it like a lot. Um, I I hope you'll stick with it. I hope you'll stick with my content, the bad, the good, um, the constant. I think desire that I have to improve and make things better, because this 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 is this is going to be a very critical <laughs> video of myself and my own work. So just as a heads up. Um, but again, I'm. I'm just very thankful, I think. I'm very grateful for the support on the recent video and just general support. I mean, just subscribing in general. I mean, that's... Man. Uh, but with that being said, I already said it before, but again, welcome uh, to the behind-the-scenes self-analysis. Uh, combo, the combo. I'm going to be doing more... Combining these two ideas or entities together in just one video um so i don't repeat myself over and over and over again uh, and i mean we're going to be going through the video i'll be talking about kind of my thoughts on it itself and like some of the ideas i had in development like pretty much i don't remember how much i um no i i, I did storyboard this project a lot like quite a bit for a lot of the visual stuff because it's just like I needed and like some of that changed in development and like during the actual editing process of course but I, I tend to I've been trying to sell or I've been trying to um if I can speak properly here um I've been trying to figure out you know I've been trying to what's the word I completely forgot what the word was no storyboard i've been trying to storyboard these projects a lot more because i think it's good it helps with the making it more visual enticing i think um anyway so this is what it kind of looks like in premiere a little goofy it's okay so i'm not a professional by stretch of imaginations um we can go through it um well one of the things i in particular like to do is I'm a very After Effects person these days, where like a lot of this footage is stuff 
edited in After Effects, and we'll get to that. Uh, I don't know if I'll, depending on what I see throughout the video, I, I might like go to an After Effects file and pick that. For right now, I just have, I think, one of the sections people really liked and talked about was this kind of section. Where you had to go through the eye and stuff, which I think is really cool. And I, I took a lot of inspiration from uh, the Spider-Man 2, like, Doc Ock classes scene. Where Spider-Man's swinging throughout the city. And you kind of, like, have that shifted perspective. It's smaller. And it reveals it's like, oh, it's his glasses. It's really cool. It's really, it's very cool. Very cool visually. And I took some inspiration from that. Uh, because I was just thinking about that. Uh, anyway, this is kind of how I like to organize this type of stuff where you have I just like to do kind of files per sections and main stuff and then was it in, it's like the after effects the main footage images I might use uh, music for the section nest is like when you combine like for example if I take these two right click um, you could do nest which kind of combines them into one little entity that you can then double click and go in like sequence sequence is the term uh, it makes a sequence, and you can go in and like click it and edit it within that sequence, and it kind of just it's multiple layers, I guess, sound effects, uh, which I'll have, and I'm, I'm trying to work on more sound effects as a, as a whole. Anyway, you guys have been probably waiting too long. We've been here for like you know it's almost seven minutes, uh, but it, the actual video itself. I think if I could do this again, I would make this more interesting. But I think I, I just wanted the simple odd approach at first. This was very early on. Like pretty much every section I work on is like kind of in order. Um, maybe I'll change that at some point. But I don't really like doing that. Cause it, just, it makes me feel like it's I have the flow down as it goes throughout the project if I work on it like the beginning of the time. We have the music. It's a little goofy. Spider Man. One of the things I'm still trying to improve, I think, as well, is my, I think, pronunciation. Where, I mean, you probably can't. I think it's usually you're very critical of yourself for that, which is fine. Um, But I think it's not only are there, I think, certain pronunciations and or pronunciation whatever and just like general flow of the speech kind of like is a bit mumbly so i'm trying to work on more clarity for the scripts i also think one of the habits i tend to do is when i'm reading a script it just it does not feel very natural and i think i did try to improve that a lot in this video in particular and i'll, I'll you know keep improving over and over again to where it sounds like more natural and less not necessarily script written, but there's like a kind of monotoneness, I think, to it. And just, I don't, it's, not that I, it, it's, it's fine, but I would like it to be better. I like that part. That was kind of hard to figure out a little bit. But I just had to figure out the whole transform function premiere. This one was uh, fine, 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 fine. I I couldn't figure out. I wanted to include this because I thought it was like, oh, this is kind of like a main thing, you know, that kind of happened. And it's like, oh, it's like, you know, it's it's a rough time, right? It's like Uncle Ben dead, apartment was Harry Osborn gone, you know, oh, clone sock, <laughs> uh, you know, one more day. And then he killed, accidentally killed someone, right? And it's just like, I, I, you know, I didn't have a way to show that. There's not, like, I don't really think there's another image I could use. Because it's also, like, it doesn't really get brought up much. Um, I think there's actually a Daredevil issue where he talks about it specifically. I think it was, like, more of a recent one. Also, Chip Zardsky. Uh, Chip Zardsky, sorry. Um, actually, I do screw up his name. I feel it is a little bland. I think especially compared to everything else. Where I think at the beginning I was just trying to like, let me show the issue. Um, I think 
if I were to do this now, I think I would probably bl maybe blur this out. Maybe I would have like more of like a frame around this. Um, it's fine. The the more VRP effect also is just kind of worthless. I don't know why. I feel like every. I don't know. There's some. There's some like. Passive aggressiveness. Tucked in. Into some of these scripts. Uh, for sure. And it's just like. It's like why, why? Well, I mean, you didn't need. I mean, it's like uh, yes. It's like. Uh, I mean, it, it is a statement to say, right? And it's like okay, because that I think it does happen a lot. For Spider-Man in particular, where I think everyone has this very clear, like, desire or, like, idea of what the character should be. And I think it usually closes out, like, other explorations and ideas um, as well. And I think it's very funny. And it's also just, like, it's very pretentious in a lot of ways. Um, and how people kind of, like, explore that idea of like what they think is right for the character. And I I and I mean I'm I'm sure I have my own opinions for sure on like what I want to see. But this is just like it is a little pretentious where it's if you think your idea is just so much better and there aren't ways that it can be explored in other ways. Cause it can and it can be done extremely well. Um but it's just there's a, I think there's a right way to go about it, and there's a wrong way. And I think most of the time, a lot of YouTube, bigger YouTube people in particular, and I think online in general, because it's kind of just how the culture has developed. Um, in any way, it's where it just results in a lot of like very pretentious, kind of condescending, almost elitist kind of parts of yourself. Um like an ego type thing where I don't know it's more so a train of thought I guess I was having uh and for this clip in particular I just thought it would be interesting to have like you know Peter high, he just pours it down the drain he's like oh this pretentiousness is garbage uh pour it down the drain we don't need it oh, Spider-Man oh. so I thought that was kind of feeling um and then there's the actual thumbnail uh I had an idea potentially at one point where I was gonna animate this part of thumbnail. I think that happens later in this video. Um but I I just was like it was a little too much. Actually, one of the key things I think I I've realized in making content and making these video projects and ideas is that I think I like a lot of the ideas that I'll have and like sometimes like later after the video is done, I'll, I'll have like a eureka moment. It's like, oh, I could have done it like this. It would have been that bad. Uh, but for a lot of, for a lot of the ideas, like, ideas I come up with, it, I, I really underestimate the amount of work required and the amount of time it takes to do certain things. Um, so for example, there was one idea I had early on in the project where I was going to pretty heavily animate like every like every part of the 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 i think the maybe like the mother's story part and especially when he goes like after them uh like those sections where i show much more of the the panels and much more of the comic pages in itself those are going to be a lot more heavily animated similar to how kind of marvel does their comic trailers or um there's like the watchman motion comic that exists it's really interesting and it was going to be kind of like that um but then i think i realized that it would have took it, taken would have taken a lot of time time that i just did not have and was not really super interested in doing especially since i wanted this to be initially this was supposed to be done in like within one month which was obviously not the case this was supposed to come out in december it it came out in what January, the very last day, pretty much. 
So that was a failure. That's one of the reasons also it's like I wanted to make shorter videos so I can get it within that month time frame. And on top of that, I wanted to um, be kind of have more tighter scripts and like be more concise and figure out how to like, it's almost like a challenge in a way to improve my writing and improve my, my content as a whole was to kind of like, okay, you have a much limited more, you have a limited amount of words you can use here. So you need to figure out how to do that. You need to be like engaging and you have, you know, 10 minutes or so to make a video. Um, that way you know, more people are going to be interested in watching it because it's shorter and it doesn't take so much time of your day. And while there are t definitely projects I want to do that are much, much longer, uh, like heads up and many years from now, I have a plan for like a 12 hour long video. It's pretty much going to be like a book in a sense. Um, it's going to be long ways away. We're not going to, we're not close. There's a lot of things that have to happen for that video to start really having a bigger, um, like priority of development. Um, I don't even remember how I started talking about this. Whatever. Continue. I do that a lot. I I I I tend to go on tangents a lot to kind of have uh, cuz it's you know, I'll be thinking something and it's just gonna, I have to like it's an impulse, right? Just to mm, go explore whatever idea I'm having. Sorry. Now those I couldn't really hear it, but there's like cuz the music starts playing. Right. Now those a little light. I wish I did not have these black bars. I think it's just the footage I couldn't. It's a bit difficult. I do think that was a pretty good choice of of footage. Although this less so. I think I was trying to figure out how to better do this. I don't think I would do the, the shadow now. I think I could just leave it as is. Oh my god, it's Traveler. What's his name again? I don't remember. It's, it's been a while. I, I think that's great about comics as well is they use a lot of white and like a lot of their like side stuff is also white. So I just use a white background in order to kind of make it kind of help with making things a little bit more visual. Like, right? Because it's like, obviously, that was just a single panel. There's a single panel. Uh, and there was like a bunch of other panels around them and like in that whole page. But because it's white, I can utilize the white background to kind of make it look pretty, very like, you know, not awkward. It just looks kind of natural on the screen. Yeah, I mean, see, white everywhere. Man, I like this effect a lot. This was cool. I don't even remember exactly how I did it. I'll have to go look, but it is cool. I think it's like, I don't think I would change it. It just looks cool. I just would love how to figure out how to replicate that a little bit more. Ah, I butchered his name. Sorry. It's Chip Zdarsky. Zdarsky, all right? Like, I forgot the D. I fixed it later. When I say his name again later. This was also kind of cool. Like, uh, where are the... Where the text just comes in on the side. It just kind of writes itself. I also like that, where it just kind of, like, gets wiped from the screen. It's cool. I think for this section in particular, I didn't really have a great idea of... Because I didn't really have much to work on. In terms of like images that I had, so I kind of like was making things up and and like a, just a weird trying to be like dynamic with whatever popped in my head a little bit to kind of show what I was talking about in like a very basic, simple yeah, format. So like I can do this because he's working on those, and I can show this, uh, which was you know Spider Shadow, and then Life Story gets to yoink. Uh, and this, I, I've been trying to figure out how to do like this kind of highlighter look and this kind of why it looks like this, which is like a little, eh, 
more pencil eraser shavings, I think. I think that's what it is here. Uh, but I've been trying to figure out how to do the highlight because it's like if you ever watched like one of those like uh, Vox videos where there's this very particular Legend, uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time video that I really love and it's like pretty big inspiration for me. Kind of does, I think, a similar thing with how it like I don't know if it highlights text in it, I think it does. Um, it's just the way it does that, it looks really cool, but it looks like I think textured. Like there's a texture to the highlighting that I it's just hard for me to figure out exactly. But I don't even know if there is a texture. Cause I think I explore I explore or I utilize that kind of highlight feature one time during this video. For almost no reason. Cause I think I was gonna do it more and then I only did the one time. And then <laughs> it was just a thing. And I got lazy here. I was like, ah, I don't wanna do these got people's names. Man, Nick Lowe was I think got pretty lambasted recently online for copyright related reasons but you know i'm not a big fan of copyright which is why i'm trying to be figured out which is one it's like why my videos are i think in the creative commons at least i try to set it as that and like any really any video i ever upload is like f pretty much free public use at least as far as i'm able to control it like if you want to like utilize if you want to upload the full video honestly i i don't you know, as long as you just like maybe send it my way, like put my name somewhere, then it's fine. Otherwise, it's like go ham. Right, I'm not a, I'm not a very big fan of copyright. It doesn't really help anyone besides, you know, big executives at giant companies who are able to own the work rather than curators. Oh, yes, the camera um sound effect. Or like not camera. I don't remember what it was. It was like a it's like a tape. Like you're putting it in the tape and you close it. I think that's what the sound effect is. But it is kinda of like taking a picture in certain aspects. And man, I use that a lot throughout this video. And I also I really like it. I might I think I'm gonna keep it with with more projects. Although I do want to experiment more with sound effects as a whole. Because I think it really does help the video experience. At least when I was watching this one. It just it feels good. There's something about it. And there's something about being able to figure out how to utilize it effectively that just works. And I think in certain aspects, especially when we get later into this video, as you'll see. Like this one's pretty cool. Ah, yes. Oh, the music starts playing. You got like kind of these uh, scan line type of effects, like on a like, you know, blurry CRT. And in a weird title, when interviewing, expect to get some really strange and potentially derogatory, derogatory response. Um, one of the things I really like to do, and I'm going to keep doing for really all of my videos, I think, it, not even just videos, I do it for like school essays now, is I'll just have really weird titles for paragraphs, and it'll be just really weird and goofy. You know, I take a lot of inspiration from the, the show Gintama. Who like early every episode, every chapter, the manga, every episode, like every episode, the titles are like <laughs> you're kind of odd. You know what I mean? It's just very out there. If you ever watch the show, you'll understand what I mean. If you've seen even episode titles of the whole music, even um, <laughs> it's just so out there. And I mean, I love it. It's it's great. But it's, I think I want to take that as and explore that on my own as well. So that's kind of why I have these weird titles. I love it though. Ah, uh, yes, the interviews. Uh, pretty much put all of them in like a collage, which is why it's kind of uneven a little bit. It's fine. Um, but you'll, yeah, I do like this though. Like obviously you have the background, which is kind of, and you, I had to have the background because it just doesn't, you can't really make it look like this, where this is very clearly like, you know, it's, it's the orientation is shifted and it shifts throughout. And it's like, it's it, the background's moving and this, this stuff isn't like, it's not, you don't look at it straight up. It's like curved very much like those kind of like Vox videos I was talking about where they, they kind of curve, have like the text, but it, it's not like straight up on the screen. It's like they'll, they'll be able to swipe up and down. And it's, turned a little bit and i wanted to explore that honestly though i think one of the things i was thinking about 
after I'd already kind of like gotten close to the end of the project was I was thinking how much of an interesting idea it might have been if I had, you know, made an entire, um, like pretty much in like Photoshop or, or Illustrator, whatever program, I guess, and made like a makeshift, you know, um, Daily Bugle newspaper and then kind of did it like this where you kind of like have the text with you uh, next to whoever's talking and you have it in that like format, but it looks like a, like a real, you know, or I guess not a real, maybe like a comic version of a newspaper that you'd be reading on the screen and I could move up and down. Look at all these places. And like, uh, I don't know if I could turn the page that well. If there's, I mean, maybe you could do that. Maybe you could do like a second page per section. You could have like a page one in the bottom, right? Or something, page two, however it works. But I thought that'd be a really interesting idea. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I could have done that. That would have been super cool. But I also feel like it would have taken a long, long, a good time to do that. But I thought it was a really interesting idea to potentially, you know, that's just kind of how, you know, project development works, where sometimes you're making stuff and it's like you have a good idea. And I think this is still a really good idea. And I think it works and it's very visual. And you'll see it as it moves on. Um, and you'll have like, they kind of just have all these different positions of the screen. But man, that the newspaper idea is like, oh wow, that was really, really interesting. I had the glitch. We'll talk more about the glitch and the mother story later. Uh, because I have like a, I had like a full reason why I wanted to separate it. Because in the, in the, in the actual comic itself, in the comic, comic itself, eh. English, it was kind of splintered throughout the other interviews. And you had like, you kept learning about the story as it went on. And I do like it that way. I think it works perfectly uh, in the issue itself. Um, but I think the way I was going about the video, it just wasn't going to work. And I needed a more, I wanted it to have its own independent section. Because I think it worked for this format, since this is more so analysis, I guess. Which is another criticism I'll talk a little bit later um, of myself. Um, so it just wasn't going to work as well. The footage is all blurry because I couldn't find great footage. Um, because I wasn't, I, I probably should have just use certain applications and websites but i didn't i just wanted to use youtube oh i feel like that kind of got fucked up darn there is a better yeah there there is a better version of that somewhere where but it's it's fine i think it's, it's i think it got glitched up because i think i chose a different part of footage um, and then you have like these people and then it's like this one. See, here's, here's the highlight. Yeah. I mean, I think it kind of looks like what it does. I feel like maybe there's some way to add a little bit of text. Now, which I'll figure it out eventually. Um, and this, I'll probably skip through this section a bit more because there's not really much point. I love this. Um, this is, this is, this is honestly a little fun part. I love this. I love that. It's so funny. Um, I do worry about... T oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Um, and this is kind of like the last interview. Before we get to like a fun section. I remember, I think, before this section, I had... I think a lot of things had happened. And I, I couldn't get to it yet. So I just started it. And, ha and I had the idea. I had the music down for what I wanted to do. I had already been thinking about the... the you know, the tearless tear zoo music for when he talks about ketchup. Uh, I just hadn't made it edited yet. Cause it's just things that happened. I fell down the stairs. Classic. Um, it's, it's just like, <laughs> so this was a bigger gap, which I think is why I think the later sections of this video have like a much more developed, um, Execution in the beginning. I love this. 
I I also do think it was a good idea to have because it's like you know, you learn later that this is this is all like interviews for a documentary, right? And I wanted to make sure I had it like look like it was being like you know it was a, a recording of someone talking because in the comic obviously it's it's you know it doesn't have this the frame and it doesn't have the the, the filter I'm placing over it with the visual extra visual stuff I did. Uh, but for this, I wanted to make sure it was like very clearly like video. This is a recording of someone from the get go. I love this. This, this is funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's moving a little bit too, so that you can have it. Uh, I think it's like a, what was it, like wiggle, like um, expression or something, where I was able to get him like to move a little bit. So it really does look like he's talking in this recording and he's moving and it's like an actual like thing. I love the tears you bit. So good. His work's great if you haven't seen the animal tear list type stuff. Um, going. Ooh, ooh, I I do like the transitions here. Uh, also before we get to that, actually, I do want to talk a little bit about one of my major criticisms of this video is, and this is kind of like it's been a problem, I think, for the past couple of projects. Maybe not the Super Metroid one as much, but definitely I think this one and and arguably the Yu Yu Show one, where there's just not. It just doesn't feel very analytical or analysis. It feels like I'm, it's like more of a showcase in a very edited visual manner. But it just, it doesn't, and maybe, maybe I'm, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm very extremely critical, but it doesn't feel, and it just doesn't seem as analytical as it should be, where there should be like more analysis. There should be like, Oh, he, he explored it like this, and this is like why this is good, and why I think this helps explore it or helps, you know, um, while well, this like particular section or this potential, you know, usage of the interviews, you know, allows for so and so to be shown to the viewer or the reader, uh, and it's a great exploration exploration because of that. And I think there is some of that splintered throughout, and especially in the like more back half after we've kind of gone through the video, or have have gone through the issue as a whole. Um, it just doesn't feel as analysis as it could be, or analytical as it could be, and I think that's probably my most major criticism, and it's one of the reasons I am also just looking to making looking forward to making more projects so I can pay attention to that and I can fix that and I think the 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 next project I'm going to be much more aware of that as a whole to be more like have a much more higher focus on the analytics you know of the video as opposed to I think this which is this is I think is this feels fine it's fine I think people and people th seem to like it, and I again, I really appreciate it, and it's great. But like, I just need more, like interwoven, than I feel like I did, and I feel like <laughs> there's room for improvement. Of course, there's always room for improvement, which is fine. You know, it's just how it is, um, and it's just something I'm gonna be keep working towards. Uh, as I, I develop in my writing ability and my because it's like for a school essay it's like I've got the analysis stuff down it's just for these videos for some reason it's much harder I guess um so we're I'm just gonna have to explore that as I'm writing the next project which I am writing it and it has been written a little bit although the production I think is slower writing wise just because there's a lot of other stuff um personally recently and just mentally um that i'm you know dealing with which is fine you know it's, it's, I, I say that word a lot uh 
you know, we just keep moving. We just keep moving. Um, I just a lot to think about, I think, for me. And that's what kind of these videos are for, right? At the end of the day, these videos, I uh, they don't really get that many views, <laughs> which is fine. Especially compared to the main stuff. And I did not expect it at all. But I do feel the need for these types of videos because I want to be better and I want to continue to improve. And I feel like I cannot do that unless I have these videos existing for me. And I think that's important. All right. Tangent over. Let's continue. I love the sound effect for that. And it also just works very well. It's just like snap. Where these were less blurry when I was like looking at it in the um I don't know maybe it's the the program I'm using because it's like these did not seem this blurry when I was looking at it in the fucking uh Premiere profile uh so I don't know what was going on there man I'm swearing a lot today I apologize well I don't but I do it's complicated whatever. Oh, then you have... oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I do like cuts to black. I, I do need to be... I'm going to try to do that less. I think I've thought about this as well, where I tend to cut to black a lot. Um, for transitions and for each section and i mean it is like a very solid simple way to end a section and i think it worked in this video in particular but i am going to try to explore different ways to transition from section to section than i than this because i don't want to do too repetitive I don't know why this thing's here. I thought I fixed this. Darn. Oh, this is, I think, no, actually, the previous section had different music originally, too. I changed the music for this and the one before it, which were initially Mother 3, um, I think it was like Plus. Um, or The soundtrack from Mother 3, but it was like the arranged versions from the Mother 3 Plus album. And I try to use those, and then bam, copyright, classic, of course, the YouTube, the YouTube classic. So I shifted it, and while I don't know if the music from the section before hits the same beats, I think this one worked very well. Uh, it's pretty much like a as close to perfect rep, like replacement as I honestly could have found, uh, which is good because I had been listening to music from Fe Seven recently, anyway. Um, and I think I was about to talk about the glitch. So throughout the mother section, and anytime I really bring up the mother and her story, there's always this glitch. There's a sound effect and there's a visual indication of a glitch. Uh, that's not from the comic at all. But I think for me, it's just the vibe of her story in comparison to everyone else was not only was it different, but there was this much more like darker kind of nature to it so i think the glitch helps immediately tell people that there's something off here right there's something you know th there's something a little off about her story in particular you know there's there's this glitch you know there's a glitch in the system there's there's some information that hasn't been told to us yet and we're we're gonna find out and i think it really helps almost like there it makes it a little unsettling for when the reveal comes about and like things get like more glitchy and then darker and it's like the red and you have the sound effect later. We'll we'll get to it. But it's just a very different vibe, I think, from the get-go was was her was this section. Right, which I think helps kind of maintain this emotional weight as well. To um compared to like how it was done in the comic. See, this is kind of like what it was. Although I think this is a little too much. Um, 
think it would be a little different. This is when I start using the full like pages a little bit because it's like it's going through this whole. I mean, this is the only part of the issue that's like kind of like where it has like full um, panels like this, where the rest of it is like you have a page and there's a bunch of interviews kind of like very similar to not necessarily similar to how I was showing it earlier, but it is just interviews. And then you have like the kind of main story plot uh, of from one interview. Um, the shoes moving as well. A little maybe too fidgety actually, but it's glitchy, right? So I mean, I think it works. Mother. Motivate. Which? How did I do this? Oh, I just did it twice. Oh, this is when I started using a little bit more. Because I think I used it in the Yu Yu Show video for panels, where, uh, and I think Super Metroid videos as well, where I kind of like change the timing of when all of these arrive. So like here, and I think that makes it a little bit more interesting visually. I have the last one first. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get you get to the you get to the shift. Super glitchy. Text is also kind of glitchy. And you're kind of like mega and it's uh, not mega, what? Uh, a major kind of glitch at the end and it's red and it's like, ah, dark. Ooh. Getting that to work took so much time because After Effects was being very annoying. I could not get it to do what I wanted, which is a common thing that happens for me was Premiere and After Effects, uh, where it just kind of glitches out and it's like, okay, let me, you want to do, want to move something from somewhere? You have the two keyframes? Okay, let me glitch out real quick. Um, so we'll get to that second just to look at it a little bit. I do like the the way this worked out where it's just like it, it like it cuts off. I don't know. It just very looks appealing the way I did it. Um and then you'll have like you have this guy looking a little bit towards the, the viewer. And he gets he zooms in and you just see this. And you zoom into his eye. And then there's Spider-Man looking back at him uh, from the next page. It's like, ah. And he moves down to them. He's about to attack them. Moves back up. Fades out. Nice. Yeah. Let's right there. Um, let's see here. So we have... This is for the glitch. I think I don't know if this shows up at all. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where... Okay, yeah, yeah. There we go. This is obviously the white background is over there. And there's a lot of like keyframes and trying to like get things correct. And you'll have the rate at which it happens is also changed. see kind of the movement of when like if I change this yoink yoink just kind of edits this too so we don't want to do that too much um I also have these kind of linked to to this one so I didn't have to like so it would just move with the eye because otherwise it's like I have to move them independently and that wasn't gonna work it was gonna be like really weird and it's just like uh let's not let's not do that 
Uh, obviously, it looks weird now because I changed the position. Um, yoink. Doesn't look right. Looks much up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to delete this. Yoink. Okay. Uh, back to this. So, it's kind of like how that worked. Where it's a lot of keyframing and just trying to match things up fading it in at the right time um, and just having like a very clear game plan right so for me it's like i looked at spider-man 2's that scene uh, that i talked about at the very beginning use that as kind of like a guide for how i wanted it to look as a result and i took advantage of that and i tried to like use my own experience and skills was editing to try to replicate that to the best of my ability. And I think it worked out very well overall. I think also the having to deal with the annoying keyframe issues that happened in Premiere and After Effects was a good, at least like looking back, it's like a challenge. It's like, okay, how do I figure this out under these conditions? And thus, you know, works out. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, So you can kind of like see the length. I don't, it's not, I don't think it's, I don't remember if it's organized this way in the way the comic looks. Sad. We talk about the human part, and I think it's good. Oh, oh there is this transition. I do think I'm glad I, I think I was able to keep the emotional weight intact in this different interpretation, I guess, or adaptation more accurately of, of the issue into this video where I'm able to make it in a much more, there's more visually dynamic, but still like it has it. I think, I think it worked He's as far as I'm aware. I couldn't get this work to work. Uh, you'll see this does not really match that well. I I tried to get it to match up. It was not working for me. It was maybe it was more time. Maybe it was like if I if I keyframed it exactly to this this image, maybe it would work. But it's like it this takes forever and it's like no I'm not doing it. Mm. Uh, I think some of the comics said he looks very similar to Chris Rock. Um, yeah, I guess. I'm with you. Uh, and then it's like some of the same similar kind of like editing we were doing before. Some of that seamless movement, I think, from panel to panel, which I think worked really well. Um, you blur it out to like go to the past, and then you'll have these kind of. Like around and then you'll like do this to solve them oh here we go and another one Just cuts to black once again i think this is where there's a more intense kind of analysis Type stuff where it's a lot of it's kind of analyzing what Peter's saying and like how do you know how you know, how does he see Spider Man as an entity? How does that reflect? Sorry, and how does that reflect? I think for us as well. Um, and you can like, like how does he explain it? And like you explore that aspect. I think. There is some level of analysis here for me, maybe, or at least an explore. Maybe, maybe I'm exploring the exploration being done in this issue. It's kind of hard to figure out sometimes. Which is why it's like I want. Yeah, well, I mean, I already, I already gave the whole spiel. I'm not gonna do it again. I do think I like the text the way I did it here. It kind of makes it more maybe ethereal. That's the right way. But it's a different vibe. Uh, getting the white-blue background to work 
also a bit difficult. I think there was an idea where I was going to have no background or no, like, um, no frame around it. I was just going to have Peter there. Um, it kind of was what we was doing. Just have him there. That was really it. Maybe more of like a live action context rather than the video. I think it ended up taking. Ah, that's unfortunate. See, this is what this is. The, this is the box thing I was talking about. It's kind of like this. That there's gonna be like a highlight somewhere. Ah. Oh. Ooh, I love that. Gosh, this looks clean. Oh, I mean, it looks good and it looked clean. Oh my god, it was so good. Sorry. I like the text. I like how it looks. Um, I like the see this is this is how the, the the actual page looks like in comparison to the um actual thing. This is this is where the analysis I think comes in a little bit more. Like or, or much more like overtly analysis as as opposed to I think a much more uh more subdued I think. Maybe subdued is not the right word. But like lesser where there's some stuff sprinkled in throughout the the video as a whole. And there's like little bits and pieces and analytical aspects. And then this one's like, okay, well, I have not, I, we're not going through the story anymore. I've shown you what it is. Now I can get into it. And I think that's kind of the habit I've gotten into. And I'm going to try to like figure out how to better approach that. But I do like this part in particular. I feel like I could have phrased that a little bit better. Like, I think it makes sense. And I think it's understandable uh, when most people kind of look at it. And maybe like read it. Or like not read it, but like listen. Where it's like, okay, yeah, humans are very understandable. Because they are us. They are our entity. Right? And there's, there's a level of empathy, I think, there. I mean, unless you're racist. In which I guess you're not going to... You're not going to appeal to certain levels of humans um, or fascist, you know, anti semitic There's a lot of things. That's a, that's a different topic for a different video. Not today. <laughs> um, but it, it is, I think, human beings and having their reactions and their, in, your, in, in a sense, their interactions with Spider-Man makes it, it's much more of a fleshed out world, which I think, again, I talk about. So. Why well, didn't use the eraser properly? Dang it. Darn. I can't see these things, dude. I hate that. You can't see it. I can't see while editing because it's just not. It's, I have to look at it blurred because my computer is not that strong. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty strong, but not that strong. It's like I have to blur it a little bit to make sure like it, it loads properly. I'm trying to go through it. Uh, I think it's more so of a Photoshop issue where I just I didn't see it. Darn, blend it in. Curses. Um, but that's pretty much the end of the video. Although I do want to talk about the credits a little bit, where I think this looks really cool. Uh, this might be one of my favorite parts, even though it's not even like it's not even the video. But it just looks really cool. It just has this a very appealing look. And I've been, I I experimented with it in the Super Metroid video, and I think 
this is where I learned more of how I could have done that credit scene better as well. Because there's certain things I kind of figured out during the making of this one. Um, but, I, but I do like it. Where you have like people who made the issue. I, I love this. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep making these kind of like visual credits. I like this. I wish I could like figure out how to make this better. Uh, oh yeah, I just realized time passage and the DCMC theme didn't get caught. It was just the other two. Um, but yeah, I want to figure out how to make this look better. Because it just doesn't... I don't know. It's tough. It's, a... it's hard, I guess. But I, wait, wait, wait. Aha, I pronounced it correctly. Aha. Ah, ah, and Twitter and Instagram and Substack. I don't know if I said that. There it is. And YouTube. Wait, no, I said YouTube. I like this part too. I like this little kind of ending thing for that. I don't remember how it ended. I think it just stays there. Oh no, no, there was. Aha, there was a black screen. Yes. I've been here for almost an hour. Tough. Tough, tough, tough. But it's okay. Um, I think... Trying to think of what else I have to say. I don't. I don't think I really have anything. If I'm honest, I. I'm again. Improvements need to be made as a whole. Um. To I think my in overall writing process. I think the visual stuff was really good. It was great even. Um, I think sound effect usage is great and I need to keep working on that and improving how I do that. I think there are certain writing aspects that are really good. And I think the, the kind of exploration of the issue itself, while maybe not as analytical as I would like it to be, I think was at least a good, not necessarily summary, but a good exploration in that aspect where we're looking at it and we're showcasing it and explaining certain things. Um, and we showed it in a very visual, dynamic way that I think has a lot of creativity, a lot of more personal um, adaptation, interpretation type stuff. And I think that's very good. And I think we can look at that and say, hey, solid. You know, we'll keep working on it. We'll keep figuring it out. Um, oh, actually, I didn't want to know what the last issue was. So for people who subscribed, um, it's going to be a while before we touch spider-man again just as a heads up uh so i hope you'll stay for the other stuff i have uh and the various types of projects and you know i i have i think there is an idea that i'm going to do maybe more less highly edited content potentially where it's just me talking a little bit like i'll write a script and just go through that and maybe like thoughts on something um, and have like some, like a tiny editing, more so just like almost like a podcast format, I think could be very interesting. Uh, I don't know if I'll go through with that necessarily, but I think it'd be an idea. Um, and then I'll still have the main highly edited projects, um, I think. I'd probably have to call those videos something so it's not confused with like the highly edited stuff so people don't click it. I'm, I'm I can find a name, I'm sure. But the 
I'm trying to think of when I'll touch Spider-Man again. It's gonna be a, it would be a long while, like a couple months, because right now I already have, I think, two projects. Or at least at the very least, I'm working on one, and then I think I have an idea for the second one, although I don't remember exactly. So we'll see where that goes. I'll have to remember what I was thinking of, or if I've already like touched it a little bit. I'm not sure for sure. We'll see. Um, I hope it's more analytical uh, than this one. Or in general, I just hope it has more of that. Um, which is fine. And. Yeah. 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 I mean, hey, Spider Man fans who subscribed, I understand the struggle of not getting what you want in terms of content. I apologize. Um, but hey, the Fire Emblem fans haven't gotten anything for almost three years. Uh, more than three years, actually, now I think about it. All right. They haven't gotten a Fire Emblem-related video since, like, that Roy... Well, there, was one, there was a couple that used to be on the channel before then, but I deleted it. It wasn't very good. Sad. I was very frustrated with it. Uh, but the Roy video came out, like, December 2019. To 2023. It's been over three years. And they're still waiting. You never know when they're going to get one. I mean, I have like a big like idea for later down the line, but it's gonna be a couple of years before I can get that off the ground. Um, who knows? Who knows, really? Editing takes a while, and I really like doing the visual stuff and making it like super interesting. Uh, but for now, uh. This is me signing off. I again, I really appreciate the love and support I've gotten recently for the Spider-Man video. I mean, over seven thousand views in like a week. Holy moly! Like you have, I mean, that's insane. That's insane. It's just like I don't even know how to articulate effectively how insane that is. Like you know, I mean, I mean, I've almost gotten a hundred subscribers from that video alone. Right, and I mean, obviously, if I was a bigger content creator, it's like it would be like, well, thousand, well, ten thousand one video, whoa. Uh, but it's just like it is, it is very meaningful, and it's just like I think at this lower level, it is so impactful. So thank you. Um, was that I'm actually signing off. We've been here for too long. Um, bye.